today we're going to be doing an on-range demonstration of the Kestrel 5700 Elite. I'm PH6 and this is the most invaluable long-range hunting tool that I have ever used out here in Africa. The first step once unpackaging your Kestrel is to download the Kestrel Link Ballistic app off the App Store. Once you've downloaded the app, open the app, turn your Bluetooth on and connect the two devices together. You can then begin building your gun profiles within the app for each caliber. Select the caliber, hit the send button, and it will be stored on your Kestrel. Once connected, very important is to update Kestrel latitude. For some cell phones, you need to go into your privacy settings and turn location services on. Hit the update latitude. It's sending the latitude to Kestrel and it's done. This is very important for making extreme range shots for Coriolis and things like that. I already have all my calibers loaded onto my Kestrel. For today's demonstration, I'll select my caliber and shoot the rifle on the range. Firstly, when I, I'm on the ballistic screen, I scroll down to make sure that the correct rifle profile is there. Under gun, to the, using left and right arrows to toggle, I can toggle through my various calibers, save on here. 300 Win Mag, 28 Nosler, 6XC, the various rifles, as well as being able to, on range, build a new, a new profile. Okay, I'm on the correct rifle I want to be shooting today. I scroll back up to the target distance. We have zeroed this rifle at 200, so at 200, given the live update in terms of the weather and environmentals for the moment, it's saying I'm basically 0.15 of a, of a minute out from when I sighted this rifle in. So, we're gonna be shooting out at distance. Next step would be to enter the distance we're going to be shooting at. Use the left and right arrows, toggle up. Okay, 996 yards. I've just ranged that with my rangefinder up on the hillside there. Enter the range. The dope for the current environmentals is 21.65. We'll dial that in here. Scrolling down to wind. In the wind function, you have wind direction and you can enter going up according to the direction using a clock face. So you could enter the wind at 3 p.m., which would be obviously a direct crosswind from the right. You have two wind vector options here, wind, wind one and two. I basically enter a low and a high. Changing these, for example, making the low five and a high 12 or 13, would come up as windage underneath the elevation. So elevation, we have dialed 21.18 would be the elevation. So in this case, with an MOA scope, would be 21 and one click. The windage on the low is 1.85, and the high is five and three quarters. Now for ultimate accuracy, under target, we'll scroll down to the direction of fire. We will have calibrated our Kestrel. Once calibrated, we go up to capture. We enter the capture function. We hold the Kestrel up, facing the back of the Kestrel to the target. We hit capture. It's captured it at 251 degrees. That is very important because, if you remember in the first step, we sent the latitude of our current area here. And for shooting really far, that will help the Kessel determine the Coriolis effect amongst others. So we've captured that direction of the target. We've inputted our wind. We we'll check that we are definitely on our correct rifle profile. Other features include seeing what the current environmentals are, building range cards, going down to the ballistics, which would be the ballistics for this particular shot tells you at the range of 996, that's what the elevation is going to be dialed at, the windage, 
going down to multiple function cording, including Coriolis, spin drift, aerodynamic jump, the remaining velocities and energies, the time of flight, which is always kind of interesting to everyone that it actually takes well over a second for the, this uh, bullet to get there. Your max ordinance, the drop, as well as trans and subsonic ranges. The final thing for us to do, if we would like to be extremely accurate with the wind, would be to capture the wind direction. Under target, we scroll down, we go to wind direction, we enter that, we click on capture, we open our windshield, we turn the back of the kestrel into the wind, we say capture, start capture. I like to hold it for about 30 seconds because that will basically pick up highs and lows in the wind during that time of capture. Ideally, one needs to shoot as soon after capturing as possible to try and be as accurate as possible. End capture. So according to that capture of ours, the wind direction is 11 o'clock. The low was one mile power, the high was two. So very little windy today, it's ideal shooting conditions. And being from that angle of 11 o'clock is going to be a very small wind hold for this shot. Going back to the home ballistic screen, we can now see that given the wind we've just captured, it's a basically 0.9 and 1.14, the low and the high. So we're going to hold one minute left for this shot at 996 yards. And we're going to dial now 21.67. So the closest to that on the MOA scope would be 21 and three clicks, which would be 0.75. We are dialed correctly and we are ready to shoot. Typically, you would use a chronograph to get the muzzle velocity here on the range. That makes a very good starting point for building gun profiles. However, it's not accurate enough for shooting extreme distances. The Kestrel has a function to true your muzzle velocity, which make your long range shots far more accurate. If we scroll down into the gun profile, we enter the gun profile, we enter muzzle velocity. Scroll down to Cal MV, that's to calibrate muzzle velocity. In brackets, the top right hand corner is the transonic range of this caliber. We should ideally true this muzzle velocity at about 85% of that distance. Type it in, for example, 1200 yards. It shows us what our drop should be. We dial that drop of 29 and three clicks. We then shoot the rifle. We see by how much the actual shot drop is compared to what it should have been. We then manually would change this by using the left and right toggle buttons. And when you do as such, for example, the muzzle velocity is busy being recalculated. In that case, it stayed the same because I only moved 0.2 of a click. So you hit the enter button, exit button, and it will say accept the muzzle velocity calibration. Yes. And it has saved that as our new muzzle velocity. This will make your shots out at distance that much more accurate. There you have it guys. We put in three perfect first round hits on that target at just shy of a thousand yards. Each one of those shots would have been a perfect, ethical, clean kill on a game animal at a thousand yards. 
Once you've validated the data for your profiles on the Kestrel, the outputs are precise. This is definitely the most accurate long-range hunting tool that I've ever used.